أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I begin in the name of the Almighty Allah, the Compassionate, the Merciful, who has created everything in utmost perfection. And may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon His pure and beloved Messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, and His immaculate progeny of Ahlul Bayt, including the leader of our time, Imam al-Mahdi, May Allah hasten his reappearance and make us all amongst his sincere and dedicated servants. As we embrace the 21st century, we realize and we witness so many scientific breakthroughs. We are witnessing so many technological advancements. The fields of science are all advancing, are all progressing. The wealth of this world is increasing and increasing as we discover new methods to extract resources from this earth. However, at the same time, instead of being more satisfied with what we have, instead of being content with what we have, we see that depression is on the rise. People, many of them are dissatisfied. It seems as if the more we have, the more we possess, the less we are satisfied. Irritation, agitation, depression, they're all on the rise. What is the root of most of these levels of lack of contentment what is the root cause of the lack of contentment the cause of dissatisfaction there are many factors at play here which contribute to depression to dissatisfaction to the lack of being pleased to the lack of contentment however the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, in Nahj al balagha in the peak of eloquence, tells us a great deal about the root cause of dissatisfaction. The Imam السلام, through these words, which are in fact gems, they represent a hidden treasure that we have to look at and try to apply it to our life. The Imam السلام, in Nahj al in the last section, which the short sayings, which the maxims of the Imam are contained and compiled. The number of this short saying is 229. The Imam السلام, beautifully and eloquently describes why most people are dissatisfied. They simply want more and they are disillusioned with what they have. The Imam السلام, states, Kafa bil qana'ati mulka. The Imam, peace be upon him, states, Are you looking for a great kingdom? What is the greatest kingdom, the greatest satisfaction that you can have, the greatest wealth, the greatest riches? that you would like. The Imam السلام, in this beautiful statement says if you are simply content, the state of being content, pleased, satisfied is that greatest kingdom that you can have, is that richness that you would like to have in your life. It truly makes you feel rich as if you are a king owning a kingdom. In one hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, وَضَعْتُ الْغِنَى فِي الْقَنَاعَةِ وَهُمْ يَطْلُبُونَهُ فِي كَثْرَةِ الْمَالِ Allah says, I have placed the riches of this world, richness, wealth, the kingdom that the Imam describes. I have placed richness in satisfaction. 
in contentment. Qana'a in the Arabic language means for someone to be satisfied with what he has. To be pleased, to be content, not wanting more and more and more. Allah says, I've placed richness in this state of being satisfied. But the people, they look for the riches of this world elsewhere. The people look for money, for material gain, thinking that this is what will allow them to feel rich. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Dawood, فَلَا يَجِدُونَهُ they shall not find the true richness of this life through monetary wealth. However, they will do so through the state of being satisfied. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, in one hadith states, طَلَبْتُ الْغِنَى فَمَا وَجَدْتُ إِلَّا بِالْقَنَاعَةِ The Imam says, I looked for richness. And I did not find it except in the state of being satisfied. Alaykum bil qana'ati tastaghnu. Would you like to be rich? Go after being satisfied. Simply train yourself. Train the soul that you have to be satisfied. Because when you want more, and when you have this love, when you develop this love, and this greed for this life, you always will feel as if something is missing. You always want more. You're just never satisfied with what you have. That's why Prophet Isa السلام, in one very beautiful hadith, he describes how poor he is when it comes to monetary wealth. Of course, he's the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is not poor. But apparently, he did not own anything. He did not own a house. He did not own the treasures of this life, the riches of this life. Prophet Isa السلام, in one amazing hadith states, he says, I am a person who sleeps on the ground, not on a comfortable, beautiful bed. My pillow is not a very comfortable, soothing type of pillow, no. He says, my pillow is the rocks that are contained in this earth. That's the pillow of Prophet Isa a.s. Then he describes his financial situation. And he says after that, however, there is no person richer than me in this life. Although I don't own anything, but I am richer than all the greatest kings. Why? Because Prophet Isa does not need anything. He's rich. He's not confined to this materialistic world. He's not enslaved to money, to treasures, to wealth. No. He's got nothing to lose. When you have really, literally, nothing to lose, aren't you the richest person on earth? Even the richest of all people, he fears that he might lose his wealth any day. He fears his wealth being reduced. However, a person like Prophet Isa السلام, has nothing to lose. Now, one might think, what is the benefits of being satisfied? There are many benefits. The first benefit of being content and being satisfied is you avoid depression. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, in one hadith states, Man qani'a lam yaghtam. If you truly achieve that state of being content and satisfied with what you have, you won't feel depressed anymore. You will feel comfortable. You will feel at ease. This is one benefit that you gain if you train your soul and yourself and your desires to be content. The second benefit, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, states, أَعْوَنُ شَيْءٍ عَلَى صَلَاحِ النَّفْسِ الْقَنَاعَةِ The most influential factor and the best aid that you will have 
in order to rectify your soul, to better yourself, refine your soul, is to be content and satisfied. How? You might wonder. How is being content and satisfied any related? How is it related to your religious status? How is it related to your soul and how pure and correct your soul is? You see, when you allow your soul to be enslaved to your desires, to want everything, to go after everything, when you allow the state of greed to envelop you, then you will destroy yourself. But when you're satisfied, when you're content, you won't go after your desires. You'll put a limit to your desires. You will say to yourself, Oh Allah, I thank you for everything you've given to me. And I ask for no more. Yes, we ask for the blessings of God, for the mercy of God. But whatever you have willed for me, I accept it. I am satisfied. When you achieve this state, this amazing state, then you won't be enslaved to your desires anymore. And once you achieve the state, you will rectify your soul. You will achieve success in this life and in the hereafter. Another benefit is that you will save your religion. See, many people, when they're not satisfied, when they simply want more and more, they're not satisfied. What's the reaction to this lack of satisfaction? When someone is satisfied, what is their first reaction? What is the first thing they think or do? They begin to complain. When you're not satisfied and you want more and more and more, you just simply want to fulfill your desires, you begin to complain. Oh God, oh Allah, why? Why and why? And you begin to object. Why can't I have more? Why can't I have this or that? When you object to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're insulting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because then you are questioning His wisdom. Have you ever thought about it? When you complain, you're questioning the wisdom of God because in essence you're saying, Oh God, if things were in my own hands, they would have been differently. I would have been at a different materialistic level. I would have given myself more wealth. Do you know better or does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know better? You're re questioning, questioning the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you complain and when you object. Therefore, by being satisfied and training yourself to truly be satisfied and content, you will save your own religion and your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's extremely important. So the Imam Ali salam in this short saying states, Kafa bil mulka. It is enough for you a kingdom to simply be satisfied. The kingdom of satisfaction. That is an amazing kingdom. Then the Imam Ali salam in this same short saying, in this maxim, he tells us the great reward for the one who is satisfied, how important it is for us to reach at this level of being content and satisfied. The Imam Ali Salam in Nahj al Balagha it states, وَسُئِلَ عَنْ قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا The Imam was asked about this holy verse in the Holy Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will revive the human being with a good life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a good, wonderful life. And once you gain this wonderful life, it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revived you. The Imam states, This amazing good life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you is to give you satisfaction and to give you content. How amazing in that. Let's go to this holy verse. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنثَى Allah says, whoever does good, whether he's a male or a female, وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ And he is a believer. All those good actions that you have, what is the reward to all these good actions? What do you think it is? Yes, Allah Ta'ala will reward you with paradise and other bounties. But in order to understand the greatness of being satisfied and being content, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in this holy verse states, the one who offers a good deed, the one who does good deeds, whether he's a man or a woman, We shall revive him with a new, wonderful life. A life that he shall be pleased with. A life that he shall enjoy. Absolutely. This is the reward for all your good deeds, all your prayers, all your charity, everything you've done, all the good actions you have committed, the reward for them is to be satisfied. Allah will give you that status. You will feel as if you want nothing else. In fact, you will feel rich. And this is a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall give you. And that is an amazing reward. That's why one hadith by the holy Imam Ali salam states, the greatest blessing God one of the greatest blessings God will give someone is to give him that state of satisfaction, that state of being content. Now one may wonder, what's the reason? Why is it that so many people don't feel satisfied? And Imam al-Sadiq briefly addresses this. The Imam says to one of his companions, he says, don't look at those who are above you. Look at those who are lower than you, then you will be satisfied. Because if you want to look at others who are doing better than you, who are doing well financially, materialistically, in their business world, then you always feel left behind. Because there is always someone who has more than you. That way you'll never feel satisfied. You just want more. Even if you have so much wealth, you'll say, why does so-and-so have more than me? The Imam says, don't look at those people. Look at those who are lower than you, who are deprived, who have less blessings than you, than you have. A lot, much less. Look at those people, then you shall be satisfied and appreciate the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, with modern media, the satellites and the TVs and the cable channels that we have, we don't have satisfaction anymore because we're exposed to everything that there is in this world. We're exposed to the riches of other people. You see everything. You see wonderful homes in your TV. You see fancy cars and you see other women. Yes, for men, that may be a problem. For women also, it may be a problem. When you're exposed to so many other women on your TV screen, you won't be as satisfied with your wife. However, when you allow yourself to appreciate the blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, then you will be satisfied. Being satisfied is extremely important. So the Imam says, don't look at what, what others have. Simply look at what you have. And the last part of this short saying, the Imam says, وَبِحُسْنِ الْخُلْقِ نَعِيمًا he says, enough, it is enough for you to have a kingdom by being satisfied and it is enough for you to have the greatest blessings by having good and proper manners. In fact, one hadith states, the heaviest thing that will be placed on your scale of actions, on your balance, on the day of judgment, is your attitude, is your akhlaq, is your manners. If they were good, then your good deeds shall be much heavier. If not, God forbid, then the other side of the scale will be heavier. The Holy Prophet, that's why in one hadith states, I have been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to complete the levels of morality, to complete the levels of ethics. The Imam mentions good morals 
and mentions being satisfied because they both bring harmony, satisfaction to your heart. When you possess those good values, good moral values, and you're satisfied, your heart is at rest. And nothing will cause you to be depressed because you're connected directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even medically and biologically this has been proved. Your attitude has a physical influence on your body. This has been demonstrated by physicians. If you have a good positive attitude, you will allow yourself to heal from a specific illness. And otherwise, if you don't, you will only harm yourself. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all to the straight path and truly give us these two treasures, these two riches, the treasure of being satisfied and the treasure of having good moral values and always having wonderful behavior and a good attitude. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all to the straight path, to forgive us our sins, and grant us the intercession of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his immaculate progeny of Ahlul Bayt. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.